So I made a pretty big mistake. Maybe you guys can see what mistake I made here. But I know that trailing edges are supposed to be dimpled on the skin and countersunk into the wedge. So you machine countersink the wedge, you dimple the skin, and it sits in there. But I swear the instructions said not to dimple and to countersink. And I've read the instructions like 30 times. And I still think it's worded poorly but I countersunk them. And I've been back and forth with Vans. There's very little bite once you put a rivet in there. Vans seems to think that it would be okay. The suggestion was to use, 3M has a special glue that's made for metal to use this 3M glue. I forget what it's called. Um, it's called like Metal Bond, something like that. And then like every fifth rivet, so I was gonna do like every rivet that was in line with these to upsize it. And I tested it. I tested it here. This is an upsized rivet. And I didn't have the right size. They were four in length instead of three, so they were too long. And maybe with the right size it would sit well. But then I tested some of these countersunk holes and they just don't squeeze well. I'm not, I mean, it's fine, but I don't feel good about it. I just don't like it. Um, so while I think I could probably make this work and get the strength that I need, I don't like it. So I gotta spend a hundred bucks, 110 bucks on some new skins. It's a lot of work. I've already taken the skins off of this one, but basically, I hope they rewrite the instructions and I hope anyone watching this doesn't make the same mistake I made that you do these the same as you did the rudder, the same as you did the elevators. You know, I mean, I've got the elevators here, right? Where it's, um, it's dimpled. I don't know if you can see or not. It's dimpled on the one side, dimpled on the other side. It sinks into the wedge and then you create what they call these acorn rivets where the rivet kind of sits inside of the dimple. Um, and the reason I thought that this was correct is because if you built your skins, I just did this on the skins. I just countersunk the skins. Now the skins are a little thicker metal and, um, you, you countersink this instead of, um, instead of dimpling it for the baffle. And I haven't installed the baffle yet, but because I just did that, I felt like maybe this was right. Either way, it's not right. So now I'm going to, I've already started here. I've got new aileron skins on order and I'm going to remove about, I think if I did my math right, it's 288 rivets that I have to drill out to harvest the parts that I need. I could order these new brackets and stuff, but Honestly, the brackets were gonna be another $100 and it was a lot of work to cut them all and deburr them and everything. So I've kind of created a method here that can pull these rivets out pretty quick. I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so basically I set this between two blocks of wood, take my trusty $1.99 center punch from Harbor Freight. There's already a little hole here, but I go through each hole twice. I'll save you, I'm not gonna do all of them. Then, this is a cool little trick that I found. Now, I don't have the shorter number, um, I always forget, number 30, number 40, whatever the smaller one is, drill bit. I just have a long one, but, sorry, I got all my hoses and stuff, but here's what I do. I put this on, it's not really necessary, but I'll tell you why I actually have it on there. So I put the drill bit in the hole, I twist it three times to get it started. <laughs> and then drill it, and then I twist it three times. One, two, three. Oop. 
That one went all the way through. I don't necessarily have to go all the way through. One, two, three. Now again, I'm not super concerned about saving the skin, but this method has actually worked out pretty well where I've saved the skin if I had to. These are $6.99 at Harbor Freight. I shaved down the tips like the instructions, the, the van's instructions say, and then watch this, these just popped. Look at that, right off, boom, boom, just like that. So those were the three I did. I'm gonna go back, I'll do the rest of them. Maybe I'll speed it up here. No damage, I mean literally no damage at all. Um, and then again, I'm not harvesting the skins, but if I were, except for I got, I was doing it a little fast because I was doing it on camera, but other than the drill slipping right there, I mean, these holes are absolutely perfect. So I've drilled out a lot of rivets. This is the method. I think I'm going to get through, it'll probably take me five more minutes to finish this. It'll probably only take me about 10 minutes per skin. So I'll be done with this in about a half hour. I thought this was going to be a very, very long process. Um... That's all. So I'm pretty happy with, it looks a little scratched up in there, but it's not really. I had, if you can't really see, it's just kind of marred, but the, the primer is not scratched. It just looks like it. But um, I'm pretty happy with riveting the bottom skins. I, um, I used the long, long bucking bar put some tape on the bottom yeah the tape got a little chewed up i probably needed a retape but i wasn't paying attention to that um, but put some tape on the bottom and i just kind of dropped it in between each rivet got my hand down about halfway so i didn't stretch out the skin too much and then just um just riveted using this guy for these rivets on the front and the back because I couldn't get flat with the other one, I used just this head that I had that looks, that ha is totally flat on one side. I put a piece of tape on it and just kind of went in there like that very carefully. And that seemed to work well. So I've, uh, I'm gonna do one last inspection inside, but I'm pretty happy with everything. I'm gonna blow it out, put the trailing edge on, click the ends, rivet the ends, and then um, work on this. Hey everybody. So listen, I know everyone has a different way of doing things and I'm sure, you know, had I had the woodworking equipment and more time in my life, I would have routed out a section of my table for my aluminum stock or attached an angle bracket here on some kind of wing nut system. But hey, I know that there's some builders out there who are going to be a little bit more like me. Like we want a really good airplane and we want to take our time, but I'm not an absolute perfectionist. I'm a perfectionist, but not an absolute perfectionist. Anyways, here's what I've kind of done based on what I've read from other people. And it's kind of worked for me. Just so happened that, um, my support brackets that I made, uh, were the right height. I made sure when I made these, we did them in pairs. So you see they're A, A, A. We cut all three of them out when they were clamped together and sanded them together so they're identical. And then you can see that they're perfectly cut to here so that way they lay flat. Anyways, point is, it kind of worked perfect with a like half inch piece of wood and then my um, square one inch aluminum. Got this for like 25 bucks at Lowe's. Um, and then basically, I mean, it's perpendicular to the table here, perfectly flat. I've checked it with this, with my long level, checked it in multiple different places and checked it against here. And then what I did is, <coughs> excuse me, yesterday I drilled every other hole except for here because it didn't work out, but I drilled every other hole into the square stock. Uh, Deburred the holes, sanded it down, and then just pro sealed the wedge, the leading edge wedge, 
in place. There's a little pro seal leak out. That's fine. I'll get it. Um, I'll get it later. Um, but then I clean coat it here, clamped it all down, and this is going to dry for probably three or four days. Attach the table, which is going to make it a little harder for me to finish. I didn't want to cut this down because I think I might need it for the flaps, and the flaps are longer. So I'm leaving it long. Um, and the good thing is there's four sides on here. So for the next nailer on, these holes should line up. But if they don't, I can go to one side, and then I still have two sides for the flaps. And then I'm going to give this to another builder. Um, but I'm going to finish up this one. I'm going to actually do it right now. I'm going to rivet the back side from the inside using that long riveter or uh, bucking bar there. One mistake I made, I think the instructions had me rivet these before I rivet these. That's what I did on this one, and that was a big mistake because it was much harder to get the pro seal in there. Without this riveted, I could open it up and get the pro seal in there. Um, so then, now I did have this cleat goad to the straight edge when I riveted these. So it was, it's in the exact same position, but I just, um, I would wait on that. Um, and that's about it. Just wanted to kind of share with you what I did here and I'll share the results when it's done. But let's take a quick look here. I mean, again, we've checked it with the level, but I mean, it's pretty, what would Larry David say? Pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. So we'll see what happens in a few days. Hey, Cooper, what you doing? Hey, Cooper, what you doing? Are you peeling the, are you peeling the plastic off the parts for the flaps? Yeah. I'm peeling the plastic off the parts for the flaps. I am trying to do this. We're peeling the plastic off the parts for the flaps. Okay, so as a reminder for myself, right flap, angles on this side. We're looking at the top of it. This is the trailing edge. This is the longer trailing edge. It is the right top B, so it goes like this. Then the, the bracket connects. This is right three. They're both labeled three. Two is in the middle. One is on this side and trailing edge right top A is the shorter one. Okay, so it's finally time to rivet or to finish up the flaps. I have here the right flap. Um, I'll show a picture of it, but I had I had some video and picture, I think, previous to this on how I set it up on that tall aluminum angle stock there. I let it cure on the stock for the Pro Seal for about three days. Then I took it off of the stock and clecoed it in opposite directions. So one cleco up, one cleco down, one cleco up, one cleco down. And this has now been curing for two weeks. So this, this Pro Seal is firm. And the edge is, I mean, dead straight, can't be any straighter. So now, because there's some pro seal in these holes, some of the rivets stand proud. So I just take, uh, where's the camera? I take this little gizmo thingy, and I've just gone into the holes like that one. Just give it a little twist in there and get, oop, just scratched it, I'm doing this with one hand. Just get whatever pro seal is stuck in these holes. Sorry, this is all hard to do with one hand. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and rivet this. I've got right here, I've got some wood that is 0.29 inches thick and the back plate is 0.3 inches thick. So. Close enough that I'll be able to put the back plate, I'll flip it all over, put the back plate under here, use that to keep 
to support the rest of the aileron and um, I'm gonna be doing a double rivet. So I'm gonna do the first rivet just to get it set and then not smashed all the way. And then I'll go through and I have the special Cleveland squeezers that are designed for trailing edges to do the final squeeze on everything. And I'll let you know how that comes out and if I learned anything through that process.